in the gold rush in California, the people from all over the nation of the world came to California because we found it. What did we, find? we found gold. We found the one thing that would change everything. If you, if you could have more of this, you, you'd have more life is what we thought. And so people flooded it, and it's actually what allowed us as a state to become a state so quickly is that um, we had so many people showing up here in California in search of gold. Well, I think people today are still in search of gold. They want that one thing that changes everything. And what we're discovering in this series is Jesus actually made that very, very clear to you and I. Like, if you're going to do one thing with your life, if you're going to like, take all your time and energy and effort and put it into one thing, Jesus says, here's the one thing. The one thing is actually two things that are actually one thing, and that is what Jesus said. Do you remember? He said, you are to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and to love one another. Jesus said, listen, I don't know what your priorities are in life right now, but relationships need to be at the top. Your relationship with God and your relationship with others. Like, everything else is secondary because this matters more than any of them. And so in the series we talked about so far, the fact that there are other things that will glitter, but all that glitters is not gold. There are other things that are going to try to get your attention and get you to invest in them. But I'm telling you, friends, if it's not a relationship with God and a relationship with others, it will not have the same return on investment as God intends for you to have on your investment. Like, what are you doing with your life, friends? What are we doing if we're not pursuing God and each other? Um, So Pastor Trey, in his message, X Marks the Spot, talked about how to pursue after God. And what we've been doing together in, in my portion of the last two weeks, including today, is how do we pursue after, after each other? Because Jesus said you know, to love God and love each other, but what does that look like? Well, we've turned over to the book of First Peter to learn that. Here's what it says. The end of all things is near. In other words, your priorities really start to come into alignment when you realize you don't got a lot of time left. And Jesus goes, you don't got a lot of time left, so make sure you're spending your time on the things that matter. The end of all things is that near. Therefore, be alert and of sober mind so that you might pray. That's that relationship with God we talked about. Just press unto God. And then he says this, and above all, love each other deeply. Do you see how this mirrors what Jesus said? Love God, love others, pray, lean into God, and now lean into others. Well, how do we love each other deeply? Let's figure this out. We're gonna do this well as a church, amen? All right, my wife is in with me. We're gonna do this well. And so, how do we do it, God? Well, here's what he says. Very practical. Love each other deeply because love covers a multitude of sins. First and foremost, you're going to do this thing called relationships. It's going to be messy. You're going to have to learn to forgive people and have mercy with people and grace with people. And and you just got to learn to just to, well, love covers. It wins out over sin. Love, love, the Bible says that, that, um, that his mercy triumphs over justice. Aren't you grateful for that? God does it in my life. Now I'm going to do that in, the, in relationships. That was last week. Well, then he gives us another very practical thing as we're learning how to love each other as we cover a multitude of sins and offer, what's the word say? Hospitality. Offer hospitality to one another. And I love that he says this, and don't complain about it. He says, and, and don't grumble. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. Well, let's go down this journey real quick together because if God thinks it's really important that you forgive others and then right next to that talks, be hospitable to others, I gotta figure out this hospitality thing, amen? Like, what is hospitality? That's a street in San Bernardino where all the restaurants are. No, it's not just a street in San Bernardino. Where, what is hospitality? God's saying, offer it to one another, but I don't know what what it is. Well, I I think the best way for you to understand what hospitality is, one of the best ways is to think about when hospitality has been offered to you. Anyone know some hospitable people? Come on, you got some hospitable people? Listen, think about what happens when you go to the home of a hospitable person. When you show up to the home of a hospitable person, they, they open wide the door. They've already got things. You feel like they rolled out the red carpet. It smells good. Music's on. Come on, somebody. House is cleaned up. Put away, let's like, they really shoved everything in that closet. Everyone's got one of those closets. Everything goes in the closet and you kind of shut the door. But then 
they're attentive. They're, they're, they're making sure you got food. They're making sure they're just, they're thinking through everything. And you get in that environment, and I don't know how to describe it. It's warm. It's friendly. It's, it's, it's hospitable. Amen? You don't want to leave those type of environments. Kim, I see you over there. Come on. Every time I talk about hospitality, I talk about Kim. She's got hospitality. So you don't want to leave those environments. You love them. Now, think about, to help you understand hospitality, think about getting around people who are not hospitable. Anyone know those people? Yeah, not as many hands, because you, you sit next to them. Come on, everybody. It's okay. You show up to somebody's house who's not hospitable, and, and the moment you get there, you want to leave. It just feels not right. It's not warm. It's cold. It's, Tate and I went to, got invited by some neighbors, not here in Redlands, everybody. It's not one of you. It's, we are in Orange County, and a couple invited us over for dinner, gonna, gonna have us over. And so we showed up as another pastor in town and his wife, and we just invited us over. We're gonna go hang out. So we show up to their house in, and, and not hospitable. His wife answers the door like this, opens the door and goes, first words out of her mouth, kid you not, oh, you didn't bring anything? Oh, I'm sorry. No one told us to bring anything. Like, that was not in the text thread anywhere. She's like, all right, come in. And we came in. Just cold, no music. Just did not shove anything in a closet. It's just kind of, all right. Paste picante sauce. You know, the poured it in the thing for the chips we were supposed to bring. Just making you feel awkward, right? Sat down to have dinner. It wasn't enough. It, like, like they, they cooked enough for themselves it did not look like a meal for four grown adults. It, you, come on, you get the picture. I'm not making this up. Halfway through, what I would consider halfway through the meal, was it him or her? Do you remember? She got up and went laid on the couch. You guys, come on. It just felt awkward. There is no, like, like that's fine. You do that when it's you guys. We're here. Little hospitality, please. It's cold. What, now, now think about the, the experience. In a hospitable environment, you just I hang out all day. I, I want to go back. When can we go back? Okay, I'm going to go there for dinner. In a non-hospitable environment, I'm like, get me out of here now. I, 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 I'm stomaching this. I, can, I barely can. I don't want to be a, a, around this. I, I, I don't want to be in these environments, you see. Jesus says, be hospitable. You want to know what it looks like to love each other? Be hospitable to one another. You, you want to know how to figure out relationships? Be the warm, be house A, not house B. Be, be the house, be the person, be the, be the people that everyone wants to be around. Be the, be the people that, that, that roll out the red carpet. Be the people that, that, that think ahead and, and prepare the room. And be, be the people that, that clean up. And be the people that, like, just make it great for others in your life. Be hospitable. Because, see, that's what it looks like to be loving. I can say I love you, but if I'm not hospitable toward you, I probably don't feel very loved on, do you? But this is mission critical for the church, everybody. You see, I think sometimes we think hospitable, hospitality, that's just a, a side issue. Jesus is making it a main issue. It's a big deal in God's heart, in God's mind. Be hospitable. For the early church, hospitality was, um, was on the forefront of their hearts and minds. Matter of fact, when you would, if you would, put yourself in the mind of the early reader. In other words, I, I love to do this when I'm studying scriptures. You think about what did it mean to them when they heard it? Like, what was their context? Well, think about their context. Their context is this. There's not a lot of ins, is there? I mean, we have our hotel chains and all that today, but they didn't have any of that. So what would happen is if you were traveling from town to town, you're moving through town and you needed a place to stay, you would have to rely upon the hospitality of the people within that town to give you a place to stay. And Christians, Jesus is saying, need to be known as the people. When you're looking for a place to stay, you find the places where people love Jesus because they'll let you stay. 
You find them places where they worship God because they're going to open up their home to you. He says, listen, here's what I need is that people are traveling around looking for a place to call home for the night. He says, Christian, you're, you're the one who signs up first. And in the early church, the, the, the church was built on the, the, uh, on the backs of hospitality within the church. But the church in that day was, was persecuted, so a lot of Christians were d- displaced and moving from place to place, and it was, it was these homes that would act as like refugee camps for all of those that were being dispersed and pushed away where they were being persecuted, and these homes would open up to all of these Christians who needed a, a, a good meal and a roof over their head and someone to love on them, and so to the early readers, this was paramount, you see. It wasn't just like, oh, we'll get to that. Jesus goes, no, in order for the gospel to go forth, in order for the body of Christ to, to truly do what the body of Christ is called to do, listen, forgive each other and be hospitable. Open up your homes and open up your lives to one another. It was the backbone of the church. It was mission critical. It's how the gospel spread. Listen to Acts chapter 5, verse 42, Acts 5, 42, day after day in the temple courts and from house to house, from house to house, they never stopped teaching and proclaiming the good news that Jesus is the Messiah. Where was the good news that Jesus is the Messiah being preached and proclaimed? Not just in the temple, but from House to house to house to house, from hospitality home to hospitality home to hospitality home to hospitality home, the gospel was being spread. You see, mission critical that the church would be hospitable. And here's my application slash challenge to the church today is that we will not be a people who just say we love the world or say we love each other. We're gonna show it, we're gonna live it, we're gonna do it, how? We're gonna forgive one another, but we're gonna be all hospitality to one another. We, we will lead the way in hospitality, why? Because Jesus said we should. It needs to mark us, it needs to mark you, it needs to mark me. You see, it's mission critical, not just for the church at that day, of that day, but the church today. See, we can't do what we do without hospitality. Truly, we can't. Think about every Sunday morning. I don't know the numbers, but it's several hundred that come together on Sunday morning in our, in our teams and practice hospitality. They open up their lives to help others get welcomed and cared for and make sure they're secure. Can we thank God for our C team around this place that, that makes it happen every single week? And there's just hundreds of people every week that just... just this being hospitable, being, being warm, being friends, just we're going to do our part. We're going to be hospitable. And then throughout the week, there's, man, I think we're like 25, 30 different homes that have opened up to let others come in where we're going to love on you. We're going to care for you. We're going to just do some life together. And I'm thankful for their crew that they got to go to this week and the, the home that opened up to them. Like we're, the church today is built on the the backbone of this hospitality that needs to be in the church, this loving one another in a very practical way. It's, it's not just say love, do love, how, be hospitable. Be hospitable, you see. It's mission critical for the church. And it's mission critical for you. Like, I, friend, if you want to develop relationships, we all want that. If you want to develop relationships, you want to move from isolation and into community, you've got to learn hospitality. See, I, and I'll show you, because I, I think often we're going, well, I would have more friends if other people were hospi- hospitable to me, but God said, no, no, you, you go first. Remember, we talked about this. You practice hospitality. And so we have this problem today that, that, that a people who are meant to be more and more connected are becoming more and more disconnected. Jesus said, Love God, love each other. You should look at the church and see a whole lot of God, a love for God and a whole lot of love for one another in the world around us. But what's happening is instead of being more and more connected to God and more and more connected to each other, we're becoming more and more disconnected with one another. People are more disconnected now than, than ever before. And we've got to learn how to turn the tide on that. Today, we have 43% of people feeling isolated. 47% say they have no meaningful in-person interaction with anyone. That's one 
and every two. Think about that. Saying, I just don't have any real connection with anyone. Only 25% of teens spend their time with friends in person outside of school. Think about that. One in every four teens, the only interaction they get is at school if they go to school. When they're out of school, they don't actually interact with friends. We went from a day where we used to beg our kids to come home when the street lights went on to begging our kids to go do something till the street lights come on. You see, it's just, it's just been built into our culture, this, this distancing ourselves. Well, Jesus shows up and goes, come on, you need to open up yourselves. You, you, you need to get around people. So what does hospitality look like? What is it? Because we're going to do it well. I got a couple things for you on hospitality. The first one is this. Hospitality makes room for others. I want you to think about this. Hospitality makes room for others. You see, in, in a culture where many of us are in this habit of tuning people out and turning people away, we bring people in. That's what hospitality does. You know, it's like only a fourth, so 25% of people, only 25% of people, it says today, um, statistics tell us, actually know or talk with their neighbors. I'm making a point. We are, we are stuck in a society that's pushing people out, turning, turning people away, t- tuning people out, and it's just, it's kind of the culture right now. Think about it, like 25%, only 25%. It means 75% of us blow off our neighbors. Okay, how, I, I, it's quiet because somebody, like we're feeling convicted today. It's okay, hang with me. Now listen, I know, I know. You got that long range garage door opener, don't you? You go rolling down, half mile away, hit the button. Why? Because I'm going to pull in, shut the garage before I have to talk to anybody, see anybody, deal with anybody. I mean, right? And that's just our society. Watch it. Stand on your block and watch. Garage door open, car pulls in, shuts down. You don't get out of your car until you know the garage door shut. And that's just our society. Like, what's your, what's your neighbor's name? What's your neighbor's neighbor's name? How about the people across the street? How about, okay, you know them. They know you. How do they know you? Do they know you as, oh, there's that, the people on the corner, the always never take their trash cans in. That's Tate and I. Come on, baby, we got to work on it. <laughs> or, oh my gosh, they're just, they, listen, they moved in, and they're so nice, and they're so sweet, and we've had great conversations with them. They're always, they're always out, they're always waving at us, like, I mean, you know, catching eyes, and it's those people, it's those people. How, how, how does the neighborhood know you? See, the, but Jesus says, you got to love each other, be hospitable. You need to be the ones that when you moved in the neighborhood, the home values went up. I mean, you just like, they're going, I'm just loving on people, I'm caring for them. You just make it better, you see. Hospitality, you see, makes room for others. Instead of tuning people out and pushing people away. We're bringing people in, you see. But society has pushed us in this place where, I mean, think about it. Like, instead of going outside and, and playing a little b-ball or baseball, basketball out in the street in the cul-de-sac because your friend had a cul-de-sac, you're inside now a generation stuck behind a phone staring at pictures of people out doing stuff. Like, go do stuff with people And I'm not saying this is horrible. I'm just saying it's not best. And now we've grown up with so much isolation. I don't even know that we know how to do it. I think people get awkward with each other because we just don't know how to interact. There's a social awkwardness. And so what am I going to do? I'm going to look down at my phone. And now we're standing in a circle with all my friends looking down at our phones. (laughs) Well, listen. Listen. That is leaving a wake of hurt right now. It's breaking people. And I think the church has this charge from God, this mandate from heaven that says, not on our watch. Like, we will not allow it to continue. We will not allow it to happen in our midst. We will be loving how we're going to be the most hospitable people in the world. Instead of tuning people out and pushing people away, we're going to tune people in and bring people in. We're going to love on people. Amen? We're going to, come on, we're going to make room. I want you to think about it. Hospitality makes room for others. Every one of us have a table in our life. 
And God says, make room at your table for people. Hey, you need a seat? Come on over. Oh, we're going to. Tate and I, the first time we went to the south, we went, we went to Nashville. And just north of Nashville, a little town called Clarksville. We were on our way up to Clarksville. We needed breakfast, and I yelped a place. Come on, anyone, you, anyone, anyone who use Yelp in here? I use Yelp for everything. Like, I just get to a city, I go, someone got to say something on Yelp, right? So I'll jump on Yelp, and we look for the places. Tate and I talk about the money system. So there's a four monies, a three monies, a two monies, and a one money. We go, find me a one money or a two monies place. Anyone with me? You know what I'm talking about, right? Then four monies place get a little expensive, but find me a two monies. I needed two monies with a four-star, five-star review. We found a place. So we go to have breakfast at this place, and we walk up, and it's packed, people everywhere. Like, there's no way we're going to get a seat. And, I, and Tate, Tate said, I'll go put my name. We'll just go see. She goes to put her name in. She hits me, texts me, and goes, five minutes. I'm like, what? Like, how's it five minutes? There's people everywhere. There's, there's no way they're going to get us in five minutes. We're like, okay, we'll hang out. Hanging out is such a cool vibe. There's like energy in the room and music playing, people talking and laughing and every table. And there's just like, it's like a party. And I said, this is awesome. You know, like, okay. And then they call our name and I'm thinking, great. And they're walking us through this room filled with tables. And the the, the tables are like, they're like super long tables that could fit, sit like 20 people at them each. And they're all packed out. Go, where are they going to seat us? Maybe there's some, there's another section in the back that's got like little, you know, I'm picturing breakfast with my wife. Just a little table, her and I, staring at each other's eyes, looking out over a field of cows in the middle of Nashville. Like, that's what I'm looking for. No, we're walking by a table that's got, maybe can sit 20. It's already got 19 at it. And they go, oh, here's your table. I'm like, I look down. I go, there's already people here. They go, oh, they'll make you room. That's what they said. They'll make you room. I, did, I looked at Tatum and had that moment where, like, we out of here. But you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know that I want to go through with this. But now you're stuck because 19 people are staring at you, wondering, oh, come on in, yeah. And they're making us room. And I'm hungry. It's 9.30 in the morning, and they're serving cheese potatoes and fried chicken. And I'm like, i got to have some of that. So we sit down at this table with 15 strangers, awkwardly sit down, and all of a sudden, like, hey, how are you, blah, blah, blah. And I kid you not, 45 minutes later, 15 strangers became 15 great friends. We're like, we're sharing Instagram handles and we're talking with each other and laughing, passing cheese, potatoes and fried chicken, everybody. And we are having the best time. I mean, there's people in that group that will still just follow from 45 minutes of them making room for us at their table. And here's what God says. Make room at your table. Church, listen. There is a world dying to find a place to call home. They're they're longing for a table. And they're they're trying this and they're trying that. And they're going here and they're they're going there. There's there's people in this church that, that even right now you are longing for, like you're in the church, you're here, but you feel disconnected. You're longing for more connection. And and God just goes, listen, here's how we solve it. It's called Be hospitable. Make room at your table. Like, let people pull up a chair. Open up your lives to each other. Come on, church. Just be hospitable. Like, somebody's walking by that needs to be loved on. You love on them. Come on, sit down. Let me get you an extra helping of mashed potatoes. Let let, let me me, me bring out some more fried chicken. Because I'm going to sit down with you. We're going to do life together. We're going to make some room for others because love makes room for others. Some of us haven't left any room at our table. Some of us, we're cold, we avoid people. Our idea of a perfect friend group is me, myself, and I. Us four no more, right? We've got our crew. It's just like, I don't need anybody else. I just don't want any... And I know you have your reasons, like you've been hurt. You don't know maybe what to say to others. It might feel awkward. But there comes a point where we have to get out from behind our excuses and get our lives open to people. Open to people. Pastor Trey and I were out. He's learning to golf, everybody. Come on, somebody pray for that guy. He's going he's to get addicted and spend more money than he ever should. Um, we're learning to golf, and we are out at the golf course the other, the other day, and I was, you know, really messing up his game, trying to show him how to play, 
uh, as he's learning. But anyway, we, we walked one and nine, and, and on the way back, we started talking with a, with a, with a young man. And I love watching Pastor Trey just hosp- be hospitable, just hospitable, just loving, caring for him, talking to him. And by the time we come walking off that ninth hole, like, Trey's over there praying for him. Can I pray with you? Da-da-da. Exchanging names, exchanging numbers, da-da-da, all this, or exchanging numbers and all that. And that's hospitality, you see? What happened? And instead of just like, oh, it's about me and my thing and my game and my own, how many? It's like, looked up and went, hey, come on over. Why don't you sit down? Let's talk. Let's talk. That's love. And that's what God calls the church to do. That's how God calls the church to be. You see, friends, if we're going to turn the tide on this issue of people falling more and more into isolation, we've got to learn. Listen, you can write this one down. Don't just enjoy the gospel. Live the gospel. Think about what the gospel is. The gospel is simply this. You and I have There is nothing that says we should have a seat at God's table. There's nothing in me that that earns it. There's nothing in me that deserves a seat at God's table. God, in his hospitality and his love for you and I, opens a seat at his table. Matter of fact, he pays for that seat at that table by sending Jesus Christ to die on the cross so I could have a seat at that table. Jesus did everything he had to do to make sure I can sit there. I don't deserve it. But he made a place for me. And how dare we be a people, God help me not be a people who just simply enjoy the gospel, enjoy, seating at, enjoy a seat at God's table, but then don't turn around and open up a seat at my table. The gospel is literally God making a seat for us at his table when we didn't deserve it. And now he says to the church, do it for each other. Pull people up real close. Love on them and care for them. Hospitality, come on, you got to hear it makes room for others. Come on, someone say, make room for others. We're going to make room for others. Hospitality doesn't just make for room for others. You get them at the table, and, and here's what hospitality does. Is hospitality is focused on others. Hospitality stays focused on others. You, you know, there's one of, the, one of the greatest forces in our world is, is gravity. It's unrelenting, isn't it? And it holds you to the earth. And the only way to escape gravity is to have a force that's greater than the force of gravity. That's why when you go watch a, a SpaceX uh, rocket launch, or you're, you're, you're watching this online or whatever it might be, there's so much fuel being spent and money and resource and energy being spent in that rocket booster to do what? To, to have a force greater than the force of gravity in order to get that rocket to move past the force of gravity. It takes a whole lot of energy. You guys hear me? Well, in our lives, there is a gravitational pull in every single one of us towards self. There's a gravitational pull that says, focus on self. Think about self. What's in it for me? What are they doing for me? And everything moves back toward me. And that is, come on, that's the enemy's playground. That's where he wants to keep us. That's where he wants to put the church. That's where he wants to put your thinking. Why? Because if he could put the church there and put your thinking there, then we will forever live in a way where we're not actually impacting the world. We're not changing anything. Why? Because we're just focused on us. There's got to be a force greater than that of selfishness in our life, and it's called hospitality. Hospitality gets us thinking about other people. It takes the attention off me, and it puts it on the people around me. You see, hospitality cares for others more than it cares for me. It puts the desire of others above the desire of me. That's hospitality. And that's what God asks us to practice. So make it really practical. What would happen if we all did this? What would happen if you and your conversations turned the conversations away from you and into other people? You know, my my wife is is brilliant at this. Um, Every time we go... You know, we get to go to different conferences and meet with other ministry couples and, and spend a lot of time with, with others. We, we, we love pouring into others and other church planters and everything else. And, and without fail, every time we go to a conference, whatever, it's everyone, I'll, I'll always hear, oh, your wife is absolutely amazing. You guys, oh my gosh, I just, 
and I say, amen, she is, right? But can I tell you what happens? In every single conversation that we have, Tatum will sit there and go, tell me your story. How, how, did, how many kids do you guys have? And we spend 85 to 90% of our time is spent asking them questions, talking to them about their life, what's going on in their church, how did that happen over there, and tell me about this, and Tatum's re remembering names, and she knows this, and she's like get, getting really in tune with what's going on there, and we spend the majority of time hearing from them, letting them talk, and Tatum's just pulling it out, come on, if you've ever sat with Tatum, you know that she's going to interview you, she's got 20 questions, and it's just all of it, like she's just pulling this stuff out of you, and people walk away going, oh my gosh, she's just so sweet, she didn't say a word. You don't know what's all up in her heart. It is sweet, by the way. What you know is that in her presence, you were cared for. In her presence, you were, you were thought about. In your presence, you mattered more than she did. And you, without even knowing it, you just fall in love with people like that. Why? It's hospitality. It's loving other people. It's putting you above me. It's, it's caring for you above me. You see, friends, ask questions. Find out what's, what's going on in their life. Get, get them to tell you their story. You see, dive into other people's life. Hospitality makes room at the table. Hospitality focuses on others more than it focuses on me. My mom used to tell me all the time growing up, she said, the good Lord gave you two ears and one mouth. You need to learn to listen twice as much as you talk. And that was really good for me as a young man because all I would ever do is talk. That's why I preach today, because I just like to talk. But it took me forever to learn. Close the mouth and listen. Ask questions. Get into the lives of others. There's that person at work. You walk by them every single day, and you've judged them. You've not talked to them, but... They dress a certain way, and they look that way. They got that deal. That's their thing, and I can't believe it. And you just kind of walk by and ignore them. I challenge you this week to take Jesus up at his word. Be loving by being hospitable. Be loving by making room at your table. Be loving by caring for them more than you care for you. How about instead of walking by, you just ask a question? How about you find out their story, and you start to listen? And maybe you'll find out that, oh, my goodness, how you grew up in a home where your, your father left you when you were young and, and your mom wasn't really around and you were raised. Are you kidding me? You were in and out. And all of a sudden, the person you used to walk by and judge and shun and tune out and turn away, you now actually care about. And you're drawing in and caring for because you've flipped a switch. You see, it's hospitality. It's not me focused, it's other focused, and that's what love looks like. You want to change the world? I'll give you something profound. Just be hospitable. My goodness, church. Smile. Look up. Say hello. Get their name. When you're, when you're at Starbucks or Stell or whatever coffee shop you're going to, man, you, and you get up to your barista instead of just being like, hey, barista, where's my, you, you, you're missing a pump. I ordered four pumps. I got seven pumps of vanilla. Some of y'all crazy in your pump fetish. And instead of being like, hey, what, where's it? And you messed this up. Why is it taking so long? And where, hey, just, what are you doing? Me, 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 me. Go, how about you just go, how are you today? How was your week? Do you remember, tell me your name again. Oh, that's right. And when you show up again, say their name. And all of a sudden, can I just be simple, everybody? God wants to change the world. And I think our selfishness stands in the way all the time. I think our self-centeredness stands in the way all the time. And so God says, listen, go and just be hospitable. Oh, hey, I'm in line at, at Trader Joe's, and I'm not just in line at Trader Joe's. I'm here for a reason. God put me on this earth to change the world around me. Like, I'm here to be a part of the, a catalyst of change for the people. So how about instead of me focusing on me and did I get all my stuff and what's my thing? And I get it. Look up. Someone's standing in line next to you that needs you to say, hi. That's well, so weird. Break it wide open. Be weird in Jesus' name 
and just meet some people, say hello, be nice. Listen, when you leave an invite at that coffee shop, you want them to not go, I'm never going to that church. Where's my thing? You got the order wrong, church? No, thank you. I want that. It's okay. We're good. I'll drink it anyway, church. You know what I'm saying? Come on, that's for somebody. You're like, dang it. I messed up on the way to church. You got some poor barista somewhere crying in the corner. Come on, everybody. God says, church, I have been so hospitable to you. I've made a seat for you at my table. I've been merciful to you. I, I, I'm pouring into you. Just turn around and do the same thing to the world around you. We got to learn to be hospitable. Come on, be hospitable. The other thing is this as we close. Jesus says you got to love well. How? Forgive each other and be hospitable to each other. Hospitality makes room at the table. Hospitality is focused on others and not just on self. Hey, i got a question for you. You know, what do people experience when they get around you? Think about that. Here's another question. Are you focused on others? Philippians chapter 2, verse 4 says this. Let each of you look out not only for his own interest, but also the interest of others. And here's the last thing about hospitality. It makes room at the table, focuses on others. And hospitality is generous to others. Hospitality, generosity, generosity, hospitality, they, they, they work hand in hand. And I think the church should be the most, we should be the most generous people on the face of the planet. Like generosity is when, when I give what I've got to make sure others have more than they need. Let me say that again. I give what I've got to make sure others have more than they need. Hospitality goes beyond, or generosity goes beyond what's expected to leave people better than they came in. I mean, imagine what would happen if we just started being generous. It's hard not to love generous people, isn't it? Like, you got generous people in your life, you're going to fall in love with them. You, you got generous people, you're, you're going to leave built up. You leave um, better than you came. And that needs to be our posture, just generous. So generosity. Generosity takes the couch and lets your friend sleep on the bed. Generosity pays for the lunch. Come on, somebody, if you can. I can't pay for the lunch. Send a text. Tell people you love them. As the worship team comes up. Generosity says yes more than says no. Generosity stops to listen. Generosity gives, a, gives an extra helping. Mashed potatoes, here you go. <laughs> Not enough. Some of you are like, mashed potatoes, here, just a little bit, barely getting it off the fork. Now, I want, I want when people are around us, it's like, I can't, I can't eat all of that. I can't, that's just, oh, that's extravagant. That's just so much. You're just so, you're spending so much time with me. And you're spending so much, there's so much mercy toward me. There's so much grace to me. There's, it's just overwhelming generosity coming out of the life of the church because there's a God in heaven who's been overwhelmingly generous with me. So I'm going to just live open-handed and not close-fisted, you see. I'm going to posture my life in giving to others and bettering others. Now, people get beat up and beat down by this world enough as it is. People get kicked around by this world and bruised by this world enough as it is. They get overlooked and hurt by this world enough as it is. They don't need me to add insult to injury. They need me to bandage the wounds. God's called me to aid them, to care for them, to love them, to nurture them back to health. Man, there's already so much being taken from people. We need to be the ones that give to them. Listen, you're either going to be a plus or a minus in the life of people. A plus or a minus. When people walk away from you, they need to walk away. God, God calls us to live in a way where they walk away better than they came in. A plus. 
How many of you know plus people? Like, like you get around them and they're just, they're just, a, man, I just, you want to be around that. They're always speaking life over you and nurturing and caring and looking you in the eyes and patting you on the back and giving you that hug and tap. I mean, they're just, they're, the, they're, the, they're just plus. They're, they're filling your account. How many of you know net minus people? You get around them, it's just draining. Oh, my gosh. And here they come again. And they're going to, what do they want now? And everything. It's just this constant vortex of taking and taking and taking and taking. And God says, listen, I need you, church, listen, to be the plus people, not the minus people. Hospitality, hospitality, generosity, generosity is that on which God changes the trajectory of people's lives. Oh, Chris, the message today, PC, it's not so deep. It's not like, come on, I need some deep stuff. Here's, I think God sometimes goes, can we just go low? Can we just be hospitable? Can we just be nice to people? Let's just start there. Amongst each other. Because what you need is in them and what they need is in you. And if we sit and hold on to all of it, we never experience all of what God actually has for us. So friends, just let's just unleash hospitality on people. Um, let's energize and encourage and build up. I want you to make that your goal in every interaction. Proverbs 11, 24 and 25, last verse. One gives freely, yet grows all the richer. The other withholds what he should give and only suffers want. Let me teach you a secret, everybody. I don't feel like I have enough time. I don't feel like I have enough treasure. I don't feel like I have enough money. I don't feel like I have enough this. I feel like I don't. Ah, it could be, it could be, it might be that you're trying to hold on to what you do have. If you hold on to what you do have and you're stingy with what you do have, what you do have just becomes smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. But God says in my kingdom, there's, there's a miracle at work is that when you give out of your lack, you give out of what it is you maybe feel like you don't have a lot of, if you give out of it, it doubles. If you give out of it, it increases. He who gives freely, yet it grows all the richer. He says, whoever brings a blessing will be enriched, and the one who waters will himself be watered. You see, God says, if you pour out, I'm going to pour right back in. Some of us are stuck. You get, like, I hear people go, I just, it feels so dry. I just feel dry. I go, you want to change that? Invite somebody to church next week. You want to change that? Share the gospel with somebody this week. You want to you change, I just feel my spiritual life. I just got, I, listen, how about you just go be hospitable, be, be nice to people. Just go in Jesus' name and love the world that God put you in to love, to change the world that God put you in to change one person at a time, one interaction at a time, care for the people God's called you to care for. You know, I was thinking today, as we close out, how I think we miss it sometimes in scripture. We read all of these miracles, right? But we miss how so many of them, anyone want to be a part of a miracle? Like, I want to be a part of watching God bring revival to this generation. I want to watch God touch and change this county. I want to see God move in all of our cities. I want to see God just continue to bring. I want to, come on, we're going to see more people come to Jesus this Easter than we've ever seen before. We're going to move on from Easter and watch so many lives change. But do you know how that's going to happen? It's the same way it all happened when you go back into Scripture. So much of what you see on Scripture was actually built on hospitality. So again, Mary and Martha opened up their home for Jesus to come stay at whenever he was doing ministry in the area. And they would serve Jesus and love Jesus and care for Jesus, being hospitable. And Jesus used that as a, as a house of operation or a, a hub of operation in that area built on hospitality. Um, think, about, think about when Jesus rode into town. We all love that story. Jesus rode into town on a what? Where did he get the donkey? Somebody, come on, somebody's minding their own business at their house one day, and a couple of disciples walk up, hey, can we have your donkey? He's like, ah, uh, like, you want to take my donkey? Like, yeah, the master has need of it. Oh, yeah, sure, go ahead, you can have my donkey. What is that called? Hospitality. He says, here you go. You want, you want two donkeys? I'll give you two. What do you need? Jesus rode into town on the backs of not just a donkey, but hospitality. Somebody was just generous. Here you go. 5,000 men plus women and children get fed someday. 
how'd that happen? It was a miracle. It's a miracle. It's a miracle. It absolutely, it's a miracle. But how did that miracle take place? Do you all know the story? Remember? I always picture some boy just standing there with his little lunchable. He's got a little mom gave him a lunchable that day. You know, he showed up and he's standing there and he, he overhears the disciples. Well, what are we going to do? How are we going to feed all these people? It's gonna, uh, we can't feed. Maybe we should send them to Del Taco. I don't know if anything's open right now. Maybe they're having this conversation. And this little boy, just, just the spirit of, of, of love being exercised through hospitality, he goes, um, you guys, you guys want my Lunchable? Like, well, will this work? Could this help? I mean, I know there's 15,000 people, but what if I just bring what I've got? And I know it seems, and the disciples are probably thinking, so, boy, put that away. That's just, a, that is laughable in the, in the context of all this need. But Jesus says, hey, I, that's perfect. Bring that to me. Just bring me, bring me the lunch. Just do your, do your best. Just, oh, you're going to open up your home today. Invite that couple over today. You're going to make that phone call today. You're going to text that person today. You're going to, come on, you're just going to start being nice to me. You're going to, you're going to just try, just try. And Jesus goes, give me that and watch what happens when I grab hold of that. We're going to feed 15,000 and there's going to be 12 baskets of leftovers. One for each disciple that was thinking they didn't have enough. And Jesus says, it's always enough. It's always enough when you do it as unto me, when you bring it to me. Just over and over again in Scripture, all these miracles on the backs of hospitality. And so I wonder what would happen today if we as a church, think about all of us, if we all went out and said, let's just do this. Let's just do this. I think we'll hear story after story after story after story of God moving in our midst in ways that we could never lay claim to where he would get the glory in Jesus' name. Now here's how I'm going to close. Some of you are saying to yourself, what about me? I'm broken and I'm hurt and how can I ever go out and love on the world and care for people when I've got all this stuff inside of me and I got, I'm, I'm, I'm in a place of need. Friends, I need you to hear one more time that God has made room for you at his table. God has, he, he says, come unto me, all you who weary and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And before you can go and, and love on the world and care for the world and be hospitable to the world, you got to let Jesus just love on you and care for you and be hospitable to you. And you just got to find yourself. Look, look, you're at the table with Jesus and you got more than you could ever. The Bible says in, in the Psalms, he prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemy. Man, there's enemies all around. I'm just sitting here eating at the table of God. You got to get there. So you got to get there. You got to get there. And once you are there, then you can go and pour out open yourself up to the world around it, but some of you just got to get there again. Come unto me, all you weary. Come unto me, all you weary. Just come to me. And some of you need to do that today. You just need to receive some of the hospitality of heaven in your life right now. And I tell you what, God is ready with a double portion of mashed potatoes. God is, he's not going to just be stingy. God, oh, here you go. More than you could ever eat more than you could ever imagine.